So, you want to wear a Canadian tuxedo? If you don't know what that is, stay tuned. And if you do, stay tuned anyway. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Yudi, and I go by Yudi on the Glow here and on my other social media platforms. So make sure you subscribe to me here and follow me there. Today we're continuing a series I started, and it's all about how I style myself, my style inspirations, and what goes through my mind when I'm looking at my closet. So far, we've been talking about monochrome looks, we've talked about neutrals, and we've talked about styling all black looks and today we're talking all about denim i really wanted this video to also be a monochrome on styling denim on denim however there are so many other components of denim that i just could not limit myself so we're going to be talking about denim on denim looks as well as other ways you can style denim and after this i have one more video dedicated to monochrome and then we're kicking it up another notch so let's get into it with some quick facts when it comes to the history around denim, it is so easy to get carried away. But if I had to sum it all together, I would say it's the story of globalization. And here's why. When we talk about denim and where it started, there are three countries you will usually hear about. The first is France. In a place called Nîmes, they started making serge de Nîmes. Serge being the type of weave used to make denim and Nîmes being the place it was made in France. Now you guys tell me I'm not too good on French pronunciation, but Think about it, Serge Denims. Serge Denims. Denims, denim. So the name denim actually came from France when they were saying of me. And others will say the origin of denim originates in Genoa, Italy. And there are other accounts that will say Dungri, India is where denim began. But for me, I kind of think of it like, who was the first person to wear a skirt? Who was the first person to wear shorts? Who was the first person to wear a blouse? The whole idea behind making denim was making durable fabric that could last and was rugged. So I think it was very much possible that at the same time in different places, there were needs for a durable fabric, which led to people making similar material in different places around the same time. But now let's talk about how denim got its blue color. So back to India, we have indigo production that was pushed and exploited by British rule at the time. So then, I started thinking, how and when did denim make it to America? And how denim jeans became so aligned to American culture? And I don't remember exactly what I searched, but the first thing that came up on several links was Eliza Lucas. Historians often give Eliza Lucas full credit for indigo production and profit in the U.S. in 1700 South Carolina. She was raised in the Caribbean where her father was a governor, studied botany, and later took over her father's three plantations in South Carolina. But who in 1700 South Carolina brought the knowledge and experience needed to successfully grow these plants? And who exactly in 1700 South Carolina planted and harvested these plants for production? Well, anywho, happy Black History Month. If you didn't catch what I just threw out, at a time in American history, denim was only associated and worn by Black enslaved people. Also, at one point, indigo was so profitable, it outpaced sugar and cotton production. It rivaled gold, and it was used as a currency. I feel a reason that we don't hear too much about indigo in American history is because of an accident by William Henry Perkins. In the process of looking for a treatment for malaria, he came across a way to cheaply mass produce synthetic purple dye. And with this, the demand for indigo decreased rapidly and it was no longer as profitable as it once was. So let's make our way to the west coast of the United States and fast forward to the mid 1800s. This was a time during the gold rush and many miners were looking for ways to make their denim jeans that much more durable. Here in 1873 comes Jacob David. He is the man responsible for the jeans that we know now today. In response to miners looking for more durable work clothes, he added copper rivet to seams to make jeans that much more durable. So if you're wearing jeans right now, the next time you pick up a pair, pay attention to just that one little button that's sometimes on the inner pocket. That is where that came from. So the story goes, David joined forces with Levi Strauss, a German immigrant and tradesman in California. 
David leads to Strauss for production needs and backing. Together, they patent their version of reinforced, riveted denim jeans. So with the history of denim in America, it starts with enslaved people who made pivotal contributions that are often overlooked. Then it transitioned to work attire of worksmen like people working in factories, miners, and other laborers. From there, 1930s Hollywood had its role in pushing Western ranch life with many symbols of American heroes wearing denim. Over time, this kind of got adopted to suburban and city life as more of a casual wear thing. And again, with Hollywood, films like Rebel Without a Cause were associated with youth and rebellion of teenagers at that time. Then fast forward, you have the hippie era with ideas of solidarity and political statements. Think about those embroidered patches that you would often see on denim clothing. And moving forward, you also have solidarity in the civil rights movement. Some historians say denim was worn to be in solidarity with black sharecrofters. And through the 70s and 80s, music and designer houses played a role in the influence of denim. And in the early 1990s and 2000s, hip hop and brands like FUBU made denim that much more inclusive. And during the 2000s, we also have the low rise denim looks. So in America, denim has been a symbol of class, status, political activism, and expression. It went from being worksman attire to fashion statement. But I also hope your bag is still packed and so is your wallet because we are headed to 1970s Japan for honorable mention. Here we talk about Japanese selvage denim. Selvage basically means self edge and with this the edges of the denim are sealed so it's much harder for them to fray and the fabric lasts so much longer. With that some Japanese looms that still make this denim make them by hand and with real indigo which means the prices are through the roof. A lot of these jeans have a price point at $2,000. Which makes me think about Daniel Caesar. He had a song called Japanese Denim and I just had to re-listen and the whole point of the song is the relationship lasting long like Japanese denim. But when I think about it, I'm like, he had a point. It makes sense. And lastly, back to the Americas, we have the phrase Canadian tuxedo. This is a phrase I just found out about last week and it basically means we wear a denim jacket with a pair of jeans. Whew. There is so much history when you begin to talk about denim and I feel like I've only scratched the surface. I'll share some links and videos of some of where I got some of my information. If you happen to have more history and trivia about denim, anything I overlooked, please leave them in the comments down below because we're here to help each other. But let's get back to what you guys came here for. Let's get to the styling. All right, so vibe check. The great thing about denim is that it never really goes out of style. And even if you choose to do a matchy matchy denim look, there's a way to still make it chic, give it a vintage appeal, or timeless look. It's an easy way to do casual and comfortable, or you can pizzazz it up with certain accessories. It's quick and it doesn't take much thought. You literally can just throw pieces together and just see what sticks. <laughs> That's what I do. So my what, when, and where's. I'm usually wearing full denim looks for day parties and activities. And you can also wear full denim looks at night, just spice it up with a heel or whatever accessories. So I feel the safest way to go about styling denim on denim looks is to stick to the same tone, shade, or wash of denim. And as far as styling goes, there was a time a while back where I refused to buy any more jeans unless they had something unique about them to elevate my closet. I also tend to stay away from jeans that have fading on the thigh. I'm shorter with thicker legs and I found that sometimes the placement of fading can make me look even shorter or stubbier. So I tend to like even toned jeans for my basics. So for me, para mi, once you have a good pair of non-faded mom jeans and straight leg jeans in blue and black, I feel like you're covered. But if we're gonna try to take it a step further and not be safe, one of the next things you can do is start mixing shades of denim. And if you're gonna push the boundaries even further, I think it's so refreshing to see denim in different silhouettes and with extra details that you don't see every day. So with this, I'm thinking patchwork pieces with different shades of denim all in one piece. I'm also thinking about denim that's been manipulated with fringes, ruffles, and tassels and down to stitching and finishing details like piping and contrast stitching or frayed edges. Another way to push the envelope is to go the route of a printed patterned or bleached denim. You can jazz it up with studded, jeweled, or beaded and applique denim. And also you can remember not to limit yourself to just blue denim. There are so many other colors out there. Now moving on to current trends that I've been seeing in denim and liking. I'm not sure if these will follow us into the spring and summer, but these are some trends that I love. The first one being denim corsets. 
These remind me of Y2K. They remind me of video Vixen eras. And I really like the idea of layering a corset over a blouse or over a dress. It just gives you that extraness that you don't see every day. And the other trend I know you guys have heard and probably tired of hearing at this point are oversized cargo pants, which I've seen done in denim. It has been going strong for a minute now with the pointed toe look at the bottom. So I wonder how long that's gonna be going. And another thing I wanna spotlight are denim handbags. So if you are my age or older, you have lived to see fashion trends and fashion cycles repeat themselves. And I feel like this is the case with denim handbags. I feel like they're low key novelty pieces and a slight flex to bring out years later because often I feel like they're not made in bulk. So if you're able to pull out your denim handbag years later and not too many other people have it, like that's the flex in and of itself. And I feel like a great example of this, I was watching someone's video and they pulled out a Valentino studded bag. Now I have to say, Valentino studs are not my favorite. I usually don't gravitate towards them because they look a little bit too loud for me. But when she pulled out this bag, I'm like, this works. It made me relook at Valentino studded bags from a different light. And I'm like, this bag is not going out of style. You can pull this bag out anytime and it's still gonna be that statement piece that not too many people have. And I feel like last year, Coach and Marc Jacobs did release a few denim bags that were nice. So if you happen to have a favorite designer house and they release a denim bag, I think it's something to go ahead and add to your collection. So now let's get into these looks. I'm just gonna start with myself because I don't have too many pictures. And I think maybe it's because I wear denim so casually when I'm running errands and I just never think to get as many pictures. So I only have two and they are from way, way back. So not too much on me. This is a safe space, right? <laughs> but I'm about to take you guys through the archives. All right, you guys know the drill. I'm gonna be looking down at my laptop and we're gonna be breaking down these outfits. But we're starting with some of my looks. This first one is a look from way, way back. This is probably three, four, five years back. And if anything, you can really tell because I feel like the shoes I'm wearing date this picture. But let's start from the top. Top, I'm wearing a chambray shirt. Now for the longest, I thought chambray was the same as denim because it kind of has the same look, but they have a different weave pattern, so they're not the same. However, if, if you're looking for a denim top that's a little bit more lightweight and has that look, I would say go for chambray. I think at this time, the crop denim look was it. So this top was a weird length. So I just cut it to make it crop. Then I had these jeans. These jeans were my old favorite for a minute. I came across them during an H&M sale in person. I think I just walked in the store. They were having like a 4th of July or some type of sale. And when I tell you I wore these jeans out because they were the absolute perfect fit, it was such a sad day when I outgrew these. And like I said, the shoes on the feet date the picture. If I were to wear this outfit today, I could keep the same shoes. I would just take the feathers off. Now this next look was also in Vegas on my first ever solo trip. And I took this while I was at the Venetian Hotel. I'm wearing the same jacket that I'm wearing now. And if you guys, please don't be bothered by this collar. It's, it's doing what it wants to do. But I just wore the same the same jacket that I'm wearing now. And I had these split flare bottom jeans that I got from Forever 21 years ago. And I just tossed my straw hat on. But enough about me, let's get into these looks. So you guys know my Pinterest is beauty on the glow as well. I'll be making these boards public sometime after I post this video. But let's get into this first look. Looks like we have a denim or chambray shirt and we have jeans on the bottom. And it's something about having a red lip, gold layer jewelry on the neck and glowy skin that makes me think Sade effect. I automatically think of that picture of Sade with the ponytail. That is immediately where my mind goes. And this would be an example wearing two denim pieces of the same shade. This next look shows you how to get that look with two different shades of denim. And then we've added some knee cutout back to those cargos. I don't know who this is, but I want to see it. What girl? Sorry, y'all. <laughs> she be getting on my nerves. I don't know who this is, but I want to get to know her. When I tell you guys about the cargo denim trend, she is keeping that look alive. Again, you have the two tones of denim, and I love that on the feet, we have a sandal that isn't a basic sandal. It has a couple extra details in there. I would definitely wear that outfit. Now here, we have Kalana Barfield. I hope I didn't get her name wrong, but everything about her oozes grace, especially when she got the bob and the red lip. It just makes me want to smile. She gives off good energy. So here we have the denim on denim look, but we're kind of breaking up all that denim with a white blouse and white bandeau and white accessories. If you really bow it, you can kick it up a notch. You can put a denim jacket on top of the denim jacket on top of the white blouse, because who gonna beat you? Who gonna tell you otherwise? 
pull on check you. So I really love this and I really feel like the fro really just completes this look like she's the it girl. If anything, I think this is a great look, especially for fall with all these layers. If it's too chilly, you can wear leggings under these jeans. But like, I love her style. And this is another thing when I'm saying, sometimes you can just throw on the pieces and just see what works. Now this next one, Rihanna's gonna find her way into my videos because she's done it all. I wanted to spot like this look because I also love a good off the shoulder denim moment. It's something, something. And when you have that gold jewelry or chunky jewelry on the neck, skin is glowy and glossy. You have that flirty look of the denim sitting right off your shoulders. That's a look I love. Tuck that look away for this upcoming summer spring because it's gonna hit. This next one I feel like is a great take on that patchwork denim I was telling you about. You have a little bit of extra seams at the waist that kind of give you a corseted look. And then this patchwork, sometimes you're used to seeing like a checkered patchwork. This is a little bit different. And you also have those frayed edges. So I love this look. She looks like a woman on a mission. And again, I had to include a menswear piece. Now, I don't know if Steve Harvey has a stylist or he styles himself, but one thing's for sure, Steve Harvey knows what he's doing when he put his looks together. He knows exactly what he's doing. Even way, way back in the day when he used to wear them zoot suits, I do not want to see a zoot suit in 2023, but for the time when he was wearing it, he was on trend, he was fashionable. I don't know who be styling Steve Harvey, but the man be looking good when he step out. You can never deny him of that. So. So that's all I have for today. I hope this video gave you some insight into the history of denim and kind of make you look at denim and jeans from a different perspective. And I also hope this video gave you some great ideas you may want to try out to switch things up with your wardrobe or see what's missing in terms of your basic denim pieces. This is a reminder that part of these styling videos is to work with what you already have in your closet. So don't feel pressured to go out and just buy and buy and buy. Just see what you need and play around with what you already have. I have one more video in the monochrome portion of the series and then we are kicking it up a notch so please stay tuned consider subscribing if you haven't already make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend like telephone and until then i'll see you guys soon bye guys